In the 18th century, a man called Jean is in a cell waiting for his sentence. A bunch of guards come to drag him out and present him to a furious crowd, who yell and ask for justice as a lord reads the sentence. In two days, Jean will be bound to a cross and beaten up with an iron rod to then be hung to death. This started a few years ago in Paris. In a horribly smelling market, a woman attending to her stall starts having contractions and has the baby right there, letting him drop to the ground. Since all her previous babies were stillbirths, she assumes this one is dead too so she cuts the cord and pushes him into the leftover fish guts before going back to work. This baby is Jean and soon takes his first breath, which gets him to smell all the horrid scents from the market. When Jean cries for the first time, all the people in the market hear him and accuse the mother of trying to kill him. The mother tries to run away, but the crowd catches her and she's executed. Afterward Jean is sent to Madame Guillard's orphanage, where there already are so many kids that they sleep in piles. When the baby is left in one of these many piles, the children are annoyed by his presence. A boy tries to poke him but Jean grabs the finger and smells it, which creeps everyone out. The children decide to kill Jean with a pillow and when he starts crying, Madame Guillard comes over to save him and whips the children for their misbehavior. Years pass and by age 5, Jean still can't talk. The other kids think he's a weirdo and avoid him, so Jean spends his time using his unique talent. It turns out he has a superior olfactory sense that allows him to identify any scent, even if it's far away or it's something that isn't supposed to smell. At this age Jean still can't differentiate good from bad smells, he just likes exploring and discovering new scents. Sometimes he even smells dead animals, and the other kids would throw rotten fruit at him for being creepy. Eventually Jean learns to talk and to tell what objects are around him with his eyes closed by just using his nose. By the time he turns 13, Madame Guillard sells Jean to Grimal, the owner of a tannery. Jean becomes an apprentice and Guillard gets some money, but on her way home, she gets robbed and killed. Life expectancy in the tannery is five years, but Jean proves he's tough and works hard every day, dreaming of visiting the city someday to explore more sense. After several years pass of Jean working over 10 hours a day, Grimal finally takes Jean with him to the city to make a delivery. As Jean walks through the crowded streets, he lets his nose absorb all the new scents no matter if they're good or bad. When Grimal gets busy making the delivery, Jean lets his nose guide him to a particularly wonderful scent that comes from a shop. It's a perfume called Amor and Psyche and as Jean watches the creator, he learns that scents can be mixed to make new ones. Suddenly, Jean catches the sweetest scent he's ever smelled and instantly becomes fascinated with it. He runs after it and discovers it comes from a red-haired woman selling plums. He begins following her around town and when he gets close enough, he sniffs her shoulder. The woman is startled and tries to communicate with him, but Jean doesn't answer. She tries offering him some plums and Jean responds by burying his nose in her hand, causing her to get scared and run away. Refusing to give up, Jean tracks her scent and after dodging the people throwing fireworks, she finds the woman sitting at a table. He sneaks behind her to smell her for a while until she turns around and sees him. The woman is about to scream, but Jean covers her mouth just in time and drags her into the shadows when he hears a noise. A couple walks by and Jean waits for them to be gone to let go of the woman, only to discover he's accidentally suffocated her to death. He isn't upset for long though, soon he's taking the woman's clothes so he can smell her from head to toe. However as minutes pass, the body loses its living scent and Jean despairs. That night, Grimal beats him up for running off. Then Jean can't sleep because he keeps thinking about the woman's scent and decides his goal in life is a way to preserve someone's scent to never lose it again. Meanwhile Giuseppe laments his lack of clients. He used to be the best perfumer in the country, but since his rival made Amor and Psyche, clients won't come to him anymore. Desperate to revive his business, Giuseppe tries to figure out the formula of Amor and Psyche but no matter how much he smells it, he can't get it right. One night, Jean brings a delivery for Giuseppe, who allows him to enter his lab to drop the order. Jean is amazed by all the ingredients and smells, and he can tell that Giuseppe has been experimenting with Amor and Psyche. He tells him what ingredients he's missing, claiming to be the best nose in Paris. Giuseppe is skeptical and tells Jean to prove himself. Without hesitation, Jean begins mixing all the ingredients, ignoring Giuseppe when he scolds him for not using the right techniques. When Jean's done, Giuseppe is shocked to discover he's perfectly recreated Amor and Psyche, but Jean says it's not a good perfume yet. He quickly starts mixing again, but Giuseppe is angry that someone inexperienced has bested him so he kicks Jean out. Afterward Giuseppe smells the second perfume Jean made and the wonderful smell makes him feel in heaven. The next day, Giuseppe buys Jean from Grimal, who happily accepts the money and gets drunk with it. When he leaves the tavern, he tries to dodge an incoming carriage and falls, hitting his head and falling into the river where he dies. Meanwhile Jean starts working as Giuseppe's apprentice, learning all about the trade and creating a variety of wonderful perfumes that pushes Giuseppe's shop back into being the best in town. Giuseppe teaches Jean that perfume is made of 12 notes and that a legend speaks of the perfect 13th essence that could be added to dominate the others, but it's never been found. These words make Jean think about the woman he killed and that night he dreams of her. Remembering his life goal, Jean asks Giuseppe to teach him how to preserve any scent. The next day, 
Giuseppe teaches Jean how to extract the essence of 10,000 roses by boiling them at the right temperature until the oil condenses and drops into a tiny flask. It takes a lot of waiting, but eventually the machine releases the rose oil, and Jean is so impressed that he starts experimenting on his own. He grabs random things from the street like chains and a horseshoe, and puts them inside the device, hoping to get their sense. In the morning, Giuseppe wakes up when he hears loud noises coming from his lab. He rushes there to discover Jean having a breakdown and the boy accuses him of lying because his system can't extract the smell of anything, just a few things. Giuseppe can't believe that Jean has been trying to get the scent of metals, which aren't supposed to smell. When Giuseppe checks inside the machine, he's horrified to discover Jean has put his cat in it, trying to get its scent as well. Giuseppe yells at Jean, telling him he can't distill the scent of a living being, and suddenly Jean passes out. After such a revelation, Jean quickly falls ill. Giuseppe is devastated and pays for good doctors to take care of Jean, but they can't even tell what he has. On his deathbed, Jean asks if there's any other method to extract a scent, so Giuseppe tells him about Inflourage, a technique only used in the city of grass. This information immediately helps Jean and in just a few days, he's healthy again. Now Jean wants to travel to grass but he'll need the proper paperwork, so Giuseppe grants it to him in exchange for 100 new perfume formulas. After Jean leaves, Giuseppe goes to bed feeling very happy, but suddenly his house crumbles and kills him. On his way to grass, Jean finally gets to explore the countryside and his mood greatly improves thanks to the pure air. Instead of taking the short roads through various towns, Jean decides to walk through the mountains to keep breathing clearly. He ends up climbing to the top of a mountain and hiding inside a cave, where for the first time he can only smell one thing, the scent of dead stone. The lack of thousands of smells overwhelming him makes him relax so much that he ends up staying there for several years, and he would have stayed longer if it wasn't for the dreams of the plum woman. When Jean finally comes out again, he washes his body in the rain and realizes that he doesn't have a scent like everybody else, making him feel like a nobody. That moment he swears he would prove to the world that he's exceptional. Afterward Jean finally keeps traveling and when he's about to reach grass, he catches an amazing scent, even better than the plum woman's. A carriage suddenly passes by and he discovers the scent belongs to the beautiful Laura. Excited, Jean runs all the way to grass and follows his nose until he makes it to a fancy mansion, so he sneaks inside the garden and watches Laura from afar. He gets as close as he can to smell her scent, but his time is cut short when her father Richie sends her back inside. The next day, Jean starts working in a perfume shop where he learns the art of inflourage under the supervision of Druot. The process consists of pressing flowers into animal fat and boiling them in a large container to extract their essence. One night, a couple is fooling around in the barn, but the boy leaves when the girl teases him too much and she ends up stuck. Soon Jean shows up pretending to help her, but he actually kills her. Moments later, the girl ends up covered in fat and inside the container as Jean hopes to get her scent. In the morning, a woman comes by with a flower delivery, so Jean has to cover the container before the body is discovered. Druot almost catches him too, but Jean pretends he covered the container to protect the flowers from the sun. In the end, this process doesn't extract the girl's scent, so Jean has to think of something else. In the evening, he hires a street worker, who brings her dog along. However instead of doing the dirty, he begins covering her in animal fat. When he takes out a blade to scrape off the fat, the woman freaks out and cancels their transaction. Jean won't give up so he quickly kills her and carries on his new technique. After cutting off her hair, he wraps her entire body in animal fat and a piece of cloth. A few hours later, Jean scrapes off the fat and puts it through a whole complicated process that finally extracts the scent of a human being. The next morning while the locals find the abandoned body, Jean tests the scent by putting just a drop on his hand. The woman's dog immediately runs to him, thinking it has smelled its owner. Pleased with himself, Jean puts this scent in the first bottle out of 13, planning to find all the right notes for the perfect perfume. Sometime later, Jean sneaks into Laura's birthday party to spy on her. She and her friends decide to play hide and seek in the garden maze, and when Laura is alone, she can see Jean's shadow nearby. When he tries to catch her, she thinks it's part of the game and runs away, only to be caught by a friend instead. Jealous, Jean throws a rock to destroy the lamp above them, which sends Laura running again. Soon Richie's ends the game but the party's mood changes when they discover two girls are missing. Meanwhile Jean is putting those two girls through the fat and rap process to extract their scents, which he adds to his collection. When Druot comes over to yell at Jean for ignoring his work, he smells the amazing scent on Jean's hand and immediately becomes very docile. The next day, the bodies of the two girls are found in the river. The council calls for a meeting and Richie's asks for curfew until the killer is caught, pointing out that all their daughters are in danger because except for the street worker, all the other dead girls were pure. However the council refuses because a curfew could push the town into bankruptcy. For the next few days, Jean continues to kidnap and kill untouched women to extract their scents, leaving the bodies in random spots when he's done. Soon the council accepts to put up a curfew and sends guards to patrol the streets, but this doesn't stop Jean and he just keeps on killing. The townspeople are taken over by fear and paranoia, so they start boarding up their houses and turning against anyone suspicious to the point of shooting. When Jean kills a nun, who is also his twelfth victim, 
the bishop holds a mass to call the killer a demon that shall be excommunicated. The ceremony is interrupted by a man suddenly bursting in to announce the killer has been captured. Richie's isn't convinced because the confession was obtained under torture and the details don't match the actual killings, but the council just wants to close this case and the man is executed. Meanwhile Jean mixes the 12 essences and is very pleased with the result, but he knows he's missing the final 13th note. He wants that final touch to be Laura, who is currently celebrating with the rest of the locals until Richie shows up to take her home. That night, Jean sneaks inside the mansion and approaches Laura while she sleeps. Suddenly Richie's wakes up and rushes to Laura's bedroom, but she's fine and alone. However Richie's notices the window is open. The next morning, Richie's packs their things and goes away with Laura to keep her safe. Hoping to trick the killer, he sends out an empty carriage in the opposite direction while he and Laura travel by horse. However Jean's nose immediately detects that Laura's scent is getting weaker, so he also packs his things and begins following her smell to find it. Back in town, the street worker's dog is also smelling things out and finds its owner's clothes buried in the dirt. This is noticed by Druot, who keeps on digging and soon finds all the dead women's clothes and hair. Sometime later, Richie's and Laura arrive at a remote inn and rent all the rooms. Richie's chooses a room with no windows for Laura and locks her up for the night. Still tracking her scent, Jean finds the inn, sneaks through the servant's room, and steals the key from Richie's night table to finally reach Laura. When he's about to kill her, Laura opens her eyes and looks at him, making him hesitate. The next morning, Richie's checks on his daughter and is horrified to discover she's dead. Meanwhile Jean finishes extracting Laura's essence and adds it to the other twelve to finally create the ultimate perfume. Before he can sniff it properly, he's surrounded by soldiers and gets arrested, but he gets to hide the perfume in his pocket. Afterward, Richie's waterboards Jean to make him confess why he killed Laura, but Jean only answers I needed her. Back to the beginning, the day of Jean's execution comes and the whole town gathers to watch. When a council lord and a bunch of guards show up to take Jean, he opens the perfume bottle with a plan in mind. Moments later, a carriage arrives at the town square and Jean comes out wearing the lord's clothes plus a few drops of his perfect perfume. As soon as the people near him smell him, they fall to their knees, amazed by his mere presence. Jean walks to the scaffold and his scent is so intoxicating that the executioner immediately declares him innocent. Next Jean puts some perfume on a handkerchief and starts waving it around to let the scent spread. The whole crow falls into a state of absolute euphoria and even the bishop gets on his knees, announcing that Jean is actually an angel. The crowd begins yelling and crying for Jean, who finally feels noticed and powerful. The only one who hasn't fallen for it is Richie's, who is on a balcony that the perfume hasn't reached. Then Jean lets his handkerchief fly with the wind and when it falls in the crowd, it causes everyone to heat up and start doing the dirty in a huge naughty group. As he watches in shock, Jean imagines himself with the plum woman and realizes he hasn't known real love and never will, which makes him cry. Suddenly Richie's gets on the scaffold, ready to finish the execution, but he's overtaken by the power of the perfume too and falls to his knees, calling Jean his son. A few hours later, the townspeople wake up and are overwhelmed with shame. Jean is nowhere to be seen and Druot is arrested instead, since the clothes and hair were found in his shop. After 14 hours of torture, Druot confesses and is executed. Meanwhile Jean returns to his smelly hometown. Since it's an existence without love is pointless, Jean stops in the middle of the street and empties the whole perfume bottle on his head. The scent is so powerful that it causes the locals to rush to him, piling up on top of his body to devour him. The next morning, the only thing left of Jean's are his clothes and a drop of perfume. 